Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing and Reviews Now 2, and on today's video, we'll be taking a look at the Lian Li Lancool 216 ARGB in white. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at the Lian Li Lancool 216 ARGB in white, as you can see here. And it is extremely white, very, very white indeed. This is almost uh, bordering on that kind of bluey white. It is very, very white. But for you, you may absolutely love it and it may be just what you're looking for. If it isn't, don't worry, there is a white version and also there is a black version. And there are varying options as well with and without addressable RGB fans, which is kind of what this case is all about. Up front, we've got a very unusual setup of two 160 mil ARGB fans, which are custom made by Lian Li for this particular case. 160 mil is something quite new for the PC industry. It's uh, slightly rare, but they do look absolutely excellent and they move an absolute ton of air. Well, not a ton, but very close. Looking at some rain, 118 CFM for the front fans and the rear fan, which is just a standard 140 mil plain black Lian Li fan. That one comes in at around about 82 CFM. So we're moving a lot of air in this. As you can probably guess already, it's basically an airflow case. You've got a ton of mesh on the front, you've got a ton of mesh on the top, and you've got a load of mesh on the sides. If that wasn't enough, there's mesh on the bottom, and there's basically airflow and holes everywhere. So this is going to be an airflow case dream. And also for water cooling, you can fit an absolute ton of water cooling equipment in here. 360mm radiator maximum size up front, 360mm radiator in the top, and bizarrely, a 240 mil on the bottom. Yeah, you can mount a radiator on the bottom of the case. And also if you want to in the back, you can potentially fit a 120 or 140 mil AIO in the rear as well. So lots and lots of options, lots and lots of flexibility. And what we're gonna to do today is go through, do a tear down of the case, see what it's all about, see what all the parts do. And then you can work out whether or not this is gonna be suitable for your next build. Now. As a side note, there is going to be a second part of this video because this is actually going to become my daily driver for my video editing PC for about a month or so, and we're going to see how it goes. So if you have any dying, burning questions about this particular case, then please do let us know, and I'll try and integrate them into the follow-up video. So with that said, let's get on with it. So first of all, what is the 216 all about? Well, obviously, like I said, it's basically about mesh, fans, and value for money which we haven't even touched on yet. Now, at the moment, at the launch price of this, which is uh, around about sort of late 2022, early 2023, waiting for stocks to come in, as with most things these days, this you can pick up now from places like overclockers.co.uk for somewhere in the region of between 100 and 115 pounds at the time of filming. Clearly, I am gonna put some links in the video description, so please feel free to check those out. And I would certainly suggest shopping around, but at the moment it does seem that overclockers do seem to have some pretty keen pricing on them. So I would certainly give them a look. Alternatively, you've got all the usuals like Amazon, etc. Again, we'll link those in the video description. Anyway, moving on. So front panel, very nice. Got options here, 360 mil radiator, 280 mil, 240 mil, et cetera, et cetera. When it comes to fans, I'll show you the fans which are included. Very easy to do, in fact. You've got this nice mesh front panel. There's a grab handle at the bottom here. So all you do is grab that on the bottom, give it a quick yank, so to speak, and this bit comes off. And as you can see, the mesh is uh, pretty good. <laughs> Quite nice and fine. So you don't need any additional dust filtration because as we know, a filter on a filter is basically gonna choke off airflow. So this is kind of somewhere in between of having excellent filtration and excellent airflow. It's somewhere kind of in between. So it is gonna filter the majority of particles, not all the smaller ones, but on the plus side, it is gonna let through a ton of air, which is uh, pretty much what most people want these days with their PCs. Something that people do want with their PCs is also flexibility. So with this at the moment, currently the setup is with the IO on the top here, of which there is a USB type C, two USB 3.0s, a combo headset and mic jack, a reset switch and a power button. Very easy to do, all you do, undo those two screws there and bada bing, bada bang, you can replace this plastic section here and switch those two around. So then as you can see on this side bit here, you'd now have your IO down here. So if this is gonna be on your desk and you want your IO right next to you, so you can plug in your USB devices, etc., flash drives, pen drives, uh, headsets, microphones, whatever. It's just a little bit easier to access there. Again, choice is entirely up to you. And you're probably thinking, well, how the heck am I gonna do all that? Well, it's actually very easy. There's six screws, two there, two there and two there. Undo those, you can remove the fans in its entirety on their brackets 
and the brackets as well give you the flexibility of changing the fans out. Now, when you're buying this case, obviously part of the price, the investment is with the fans as well. So potentially you're not going to want to do this, but you do have the option. So if you get tired of these and maybe you want to switch out to three 120s, all you do, spin it around, look at the brackets on the back. There's three dots, top and bottom. The outermost ones are going to be for your 160s. The innermost ones are going to be for your 120s. And in the middle is going to be for 140s. So you can have two 160s, two 140s, or three 120s. Pretty straightforward. I like it a lot. So it's a nice design there. The fans themselves are just your traditional three pin addressable RGB and four pin PWM. They are daisy chainable and they do run along the top in the back, which we'll show you later, into their own integrated hub in the case itself, which will take up to about six fans. So potentially you can add more in there. It has got one PWM lead coming off it and one addressable RGB lead and a SATA cable for power. But yeah, makes it for a pretty simple wiring setup. Moving around to the side panel. Now the side panel is, um, it's, yeah, it's a work of art, it really is. So all you have is one screw holding on on the back. So loosen the screw off, if you can just about reach it. And there's a little tag on the side. All you do is pull the tag towards you from the top. So the glass basically folds outward. There's three little tags at the bottom, which rest into the top of this mesh section. And basically the glass kind of slots in, pushes in and falls out. You'll see what I mean. So pop that out from the side. There are at the top receivers and there's little kind of ball joints that go there. And at the bottom there, you can see the three tags which rest into the top of this section here. And then you can also remove that should you want to. To remove the side panel, this nice mesh bit, which obviously if you want to, you can have it as airflow. So you can have fans mounted on the top here, pulling cold air in, or if you want to, you can actually blank this off. There is a channel behind. So undo the screw, slide backwards, and you can pull this off. So you've got this nice mesh section. There is like a ridge, which runs all the way along, all around the outsides. So if you don't really like the mesh thing and you want to block that off, you could actually get some uh, like plastic board or some sort of modeling board and put it in there and you can cover that up entirely. It may not look as nice. Um, obviously, it's pretty handy to have it there for extra airflow should you need it. But if you want to blank it off, you can do relatively easy. And with that out of the way, we can then see inside to the basement section. So in the bottom, you've got room for up to a 220 mil power supply. When it comes to air cooling, now you can put in up to 180 mil tower coolers or with your GPU sizes, GPUs are going to be anywhere up to around about 390 mil, 392 I think it is. That's huge. You've got a lot of room there. You really have. Even if you're looking at an RTX 4090, you shouldn't have any issues in here whatsoever. And that is if you mount it vertically or horizontally. And yes, you do have the option for both. Now, sadly, because of the price of this case, clearly you're not going to get a PCI Express Gen 4 riser cable included in the price. That would be lunacy. But you can mount your graphics card horizontally or vertically. Relatively straightforward as well. So on the back, I've currently got this into the uh, vertical mount. And all you do, undo the four screws, pull this unit out, twist it around 90 degrees, put it back in, and then you've got your traditional uh, horizontal mount. So very easy, straightforward to do. The only thing which might be a bit of a pain in the backside is actually getting to the screws themselves. So when it is in vertical mode, because of where the screws are, actually getting a screwdriver down inside, you might need to remove the fan on the back there just to gain access to the screws. You can see it's gonna be a little bit tight, but certainly it is manageable. So other things of note on this front section. So obviously you can see at the back there, there are a couple of drive caddies. We'll take a proper look at those when we go around to the backside because they're gonna be easier to pull out. You've got up to 75 mil of depth here from the fan mounted section to this section here. So if you want to put a radiator in here, plenty of depth. And if you want to do some sort of crazy push pull situation, then you can do very easily. 75 mil is gonna give you a ton of room. Moving across, so we've got these two sections here. So these can be used either for mounting fans to, or just for basically getting airflow through, however you want to do it. Very easy to remove them. So just two screws at the front on both. And don't worry, if you take them out, they'll only physically go back in one side. They don't uh, move around too much. Also, there's some pre-drilled holes. So if you are going for a vertical GPU mount, there's a few options there. You can have it very close to the motherboard or you can bring it closer to the glass. 
ideally closer to the motherboard is going to be better but if you're having issues with maybe uh, ram clearance or your aio that sort of thing then you can move the graphics card slowly slightly forward so yeah ultimately you're going to have somewhere in the region about two maybe three inches of gap between the glass and the gpu which is going to be more than enough to get some decent airflow into it uh, other things of note so there is what they call a water cooling mode or an air cooling mode it's a little bit marketing bs but it kind of does work so as you get it from the factory it's in what they call water cooling mode so this gives you the emphasis on room at the top of the case and if you want to change modes it's very straightforward all you do where the actual motherboard pillars are there's an up and a down mark so in the down position it's water cooling mode if you have it in the up position so there's each hole each one of these pillars has got a hole above it so move all of the pillars up all nine of them which is going to be a real drag but it is what it is so move those up they move up about an inch obviously motherboard is going to move up about an inch so this gives you a little bit more room at the bottom so you can have a couple of fans mounted down here so 120 mil fans underneath your graphics card pushing some cold air from this side mesh section that's going to be pretty good so cool air in there straight up through there into your graphics card keeping your graphics card cool making it boost higher and longer hopefully and giving you better fps potentially depending on what your game and your power supply and all those other kinds of things which are all part of the equation but you get what i mean uh, other things of note you have got this cable in channel here so bizarrely i don't know why they've gone with gray here um, everything else seems to be either silver or white most of it is white so it would have been nice for those to be white really but uh, it's kind of nice contrast i guess something which is very cool that you can actually this is in atx mode if you want it into etx mode then all you do undo the three screws again you've probably seen some b-roll from when i did this earlier undo those literally flip it around 180 on its side or basically mirror it and magically those rubber bits there end up on the other side so it just means your motherboard can come across a lot further giving you a little bit more room for cable management something i didn't mention as well when it goes into water cooling or air cooling mode when you move your motherboard pillars you also change the rear io shield section so there's like an inch gap at one end or the other so yeah you move that around that's a couple of screws again very straightforward to do as is pretty much everything on here there's what seems to be limitless things you can do with this it is absolutely insane what else have we got here uh, i think that's pretty much it loads of room for cable management if i flip it down a little bit you can see you've got some pass-throughs there there's some more in the top and like i said in the top you can put a lot of fans um, actually let's take the bracket out because this is actually a very cool thing as well so let's spin this around a little bit so to remove the top section you've got another lot of thumb screws as pretty much everything on this case is all thumb screws slide that out and lift that off and you've got some lugs which hold it in again no filters the filters are basically the case so it's all kind of integrated so you don't have to worry about losing them which is always good and you don't have extra magnets etc so yeah that's pretty cool like that a lot and then on the top if i flip this down you can see what is going on there so you've got a very nice radiator mounting section or fan mounting section there is actually a blanking plate so if you're planning on putting maybe two 140s in here in the top or a 280 mil radiator that's basically going to give you an area here which is going to be blank which could give you kind of turbulence from the front intake fans etc so they've actually included a, a blanking plate in the kit so you can blank this section off so the airflow is going to go in and be kind of pulled around which i think is a, a pretty cool little touch something else which is a very cool little touch this whole bracket comes out for ease of access which i can show you now so let's put that down again this is one of those things where it isn't on thumb screws unfortunately but i don't think it really needs to be so you've just got two screws and this top section comes out and as you can see so this is removable so if you want to put your radiator attach your radiator and fans to this you can do so it's nice and easy to do it so you don't have to worry about the case too much and things getting in the way if things are a little bit tight very cool indeed i love that idea and also there's additional channels as well so if you're putting fans under here then you can run the cables through these holes here and then through the channel on the top and they basically drop down through into these sections here which you probably can't see particularly well so let's spin that around a little bit so as you can see there's an absolute ton of access now and you can gain access to all the bits and pieces you can put in your eps connector your 12 volt which is going to be at the top there which those are always an absolute pig to get to it doesn't matter really what case it is they always end up being a bit of a pain but with this open as it is 
I think it's going to be very, very flexible. And again, if you want to do any maintenance to your radiator, maybe drain your loop, that kind of stuff, this is going to make life a lot easier. And one of those things which I personally, I love this stuff because mounting radiators, I always find that it's just like there's something. Either you haven't got enough light where you're working, that sort of stuff. So you've been able to actually kind of bring it away from the unit and do it almost off site and then bring it back, I think, yeah, is absolutely excellent. So yeah, very pleased with that. That is a, an excellent idea and particularly well executed. So once you put that back in, you can just do two screws and that is, uh, yeah, all done. Very easy to do. Works like a charm. I'm surprised more manufacturers haven't done this. Maybe they will now Lian Lee have done it and basically kind of shown them the way, how it can be done and how it can be done so elegantly. Yeah, hats off to them. I think they've done a fantastic job. Also, what they haven't done a fantastic job is the fan in the back. So that is the one thing which I'm not entirely pleased about, the fact that it's just a plain fan. It's color-coded, so it's, uh, it's not the end of the world, and being that it's white with RGB, it's going to reflect some of the RGB in the case anyway, so it's not the end of the world. But I think it would have been nice if they'd have maybe put a 140mm addressable RGB just to kind of tie the whole thing together. Let me know what you think in the comments section. I think that is almost one of the universal criticisms of this case and its setup is the fact that it doesn't have an addressable RGB fan on the back. But fortunately, Lian Li are one of those companies that sell RGB fans, so there. Someone wins somewhere. Right, I think that is pretty much it for that section. So we've seen the back, getting usual stuff. So power supply mounting section. Uh, we don't have any trays or any um, kind of panels that go in there. So you are gonna have to slide your power supply in through the side, not the end of the world. You do have a, a pretty cool filter on the bottom there. So that's nice. I would have liked to have seen it very much like the 215 where you had a full length filter, which you could put out from the front. But I guess this is a, a pretty decent, Setup works well. There's actually some massive rubbers in there as well. So when you put your power supply in to rest on the rubbers, um, that's gonna take out some of the vibrations, which is awesome. So let's take a look at the uh, back section now. This is actually very cool how they've done the back. So the back panel actually technically isn't held on at all with anything other than those little ball joints. So again, we've got the little tab on the side and you just push the tab out and it slides out and you've got the pins. Now they've got extra pins on this one halfway down and you've got two at the top there, so to kind of hold it in place. The only thing is with this, you are gonna to have to make sure that your cable management is a little bit tidy. If there's any big bulges, then potentially that might have a, a reason to pop off and there isn't actually any screws or anything holding it in place. So do be mindful of that. But I think for cable management wise, it's gonna be very easy. And even those who have got a very kind of slapdash method of just throwing stuff in, I think you're gonna be fine because the cable management channels are, well, yeah more than you could ask for really. So we'll start from this side. So these little plastic bits here, these just fold out. So if you want to say, for instance, we've got our RGB cables running down, just pull the lever back a little bit and you can pop those out, which is a lot better than having cable ties everywhere uh, or even zip ties or Velcro. Just pulling those straps out is very easy. And obviously your EPS, you can tie in right there as well. And those cables actually, I should show you those. Those are SATA, three pin addressable RGB and four pin PWM. That is all for this control hub. So this is what normally all these fans are plugged into. I've disconnected it just so you can see the pins that are on there from some of the close-ups I've got. You can put six fans on here. Or is it five? One, two, three, four, five, six. I was right the first time. So six fans on there. And also you've got a, a whole bunch of uh, outputs for addressable RGB. So one, two, three, four of those. You can, of course, daisy chain them a little bit and they are actually daisy chained on the front. So each fan has got its own daisy chained ARGB and you've also got a four pin PWM. So yeah, those just plug into there. Do make sure when you set this up that one of the fans at least from the front is connected to fan header number one. Um, if it isn't, it won't pick up a PWM signal or it will pick up the PWM signal for the rear fan, which being a slightly smaller with a different RPM range, obviously, yeah, it might get things a little bit wrong. So ideally you want to have all the fans, if you can, the same size and RPM when you're plugging into any one of these hubs. That isn't just for Lian Lee, it's for basically all the manufacturers, uh, Arctic, uh, ID cooling, etc., etc. They all work in the same way. So do make sure you do that. 
Uh, other things of note, so we've got this panel here. This is for mounting things like addressable RGB controllers, Lian Lees, etc. You can stick that onto there, a couple of screws and that comes out. So if you want to gain access to the back of your motherboard, you can do. Two drive mounting sections here. So you undo those, are on thumb screws. You can pull the drive out and mount your drives to them. You actually got a load of room in here for drives. So six drives can be put in in total. So two SSDs there or two and a half inch drives and another four two and a half inch drives in the bottom or two two and a half inch drives and two three and a half inch drives. The Caddy is again, another one of those things which is an absolute work of art. So these are kind of quick release in more ways than one. So lift that section up, the little tag at the front there, you can pull the top tray out inside there. You've got a drive caddy, so you can mount a three and a half or two and a half inch drive in there. And also you can put one on the top, one on the bottom because of how it's situated in there. So if I show you that, you can get the idea. So three and a half inch drive on the top, two and a half inch on the bottom or two, two and a halfs. That is pretty cool. Obviously, if you don't want to use that many drives, you can take one of them out, give you a bit more room for airflow and also cable management. If you don't want to use this one either, again, just lift that the tab, pull it out, slide it out, fully modular and stackable. So those just lock in together. So if you don't want them, you can just put them to one side, don't have to worry about it. Giving you a massive amount of room in the bottom. I should mention as well, you can actually put this in multiple positions. So you can put it towards the front a little bit or towards the back. So if you've got a particularly big power supply, move it to the front. If you've got a radiator, then move it towards the back or ditch it all together if you wanted to. Loads of room in here, 220 mil power supply, as we said a little bit earlier. Yeah, loads of room in there, can't go too far wrong. And cable management wise, excellent stuff. You've got pass-throughs there for EPS or top mounted fans, radiators, etc. Got these really cool Velcro straps, so they are double-sided. So you've got one bunch which goes down, which is tucked underneath, which you can kind of take those out if you wanted to. And then you've got another channel so you can take your power supply up through there. Happy days, that's uh, very nice, we like that a lot. And also a couple more down the bottom. So for things like the front panel audio and all that kind of stuff. So you do have a front panel audio. You've also got a pair of USB 3.0s. You've got your USB type C. And also this is another thing which they've done really well. Lian Lee, hats off to you once more. A integrated front panel IO connector. So this is a single block connector. So if you're not the, uh, the best, you don't have the best dexterity or eyesight or whatever. This is basically like plugging in a USB 2 cable, but you plug this into your front panel IO, compatible with pretty much every single motherboard on the market, in the aftermarket anyway. Some kind of weird Dell machines and stuff might not, but uh, your ASUS, BioStar, MSI, Gigabyte, Azrock, etc., all gonna be absolutely fine with that connector. So I think that's pretty much it for there. Let's take a look at the bottom, which uh, isn't particularly exciting, but I suppose you've got to see it. So there's the mounting sections there for the hard drive cages. Again, you can move it forward and backwards. Uh, rubber feet. You've also got very slim live feet as well, which is something I noticed. They've actually reduced the height of this quite considerably, which may impact if you're putting this onto some surfaces, getting airflow actually into your power supply. I wouldn't say challenging, but certainly something to think about, especially if you're maybe a crazy person and put it on carpet. You probably don't want to do that because it is going to be very, uh, very shallow. It's only about maybe half to three quarters of an inch of gap there, which isn't a great deal, but um, it gets the job done. And also having slightly smaller feet means it doesn't have such a big overall stance, which I guess is one of those things that is uh, probably a little bit beneficial. But yeah, depending on how you like it, that is kind of is what it is. So I think that is pretty much it for everything. Um, did I show you the front IO? I think I talked about it, but there you go again. So USB type C, always good to see that. Uh, two USB 3.0s combo mic headset jack, reset button and power switch. And also you've got the kind of uh, the mesh carrying on through there, following the design through from the front, through there and through to the back which uh, overall I think they've done a fantastic job. So the last thing to do is to show you what the RGB looks like and uh, let's do that now. So you can see the fans, or you can't see the fans spinning. I haven't bothered doing that because obviously noise, etc. If you want to see what the fans actually sound like, we did a live stream where I went through this in uh, a little bit more detail and took some questions from the audience and viewers, etc. So we'll link that in the video description as well if you want to check that out. There's a very long stream, about two and a half hours, but there was a lot of questions and answers about this particular case. And also you can see the fans and stuff a little bit better as well. But you get the general idea. So you've got a inner ring and an outer ring there. And I'm using a Game Max controller, which I just plugged in temporarily, just so uh, we don't have to have a motherboard installed. But you can go through and see 
all the various colors. So you've got your rainbow puke, etc. Uh, your static colors. I think the RGB actually is really good on these. And if I turn it down a little bit, you might be able to see it a little bit better because it does kind of blast the camera out a little bit. But yeah, it is a, it's a very nice implementation that they've done here, I think, personally. And it does get very bright as well. So yeah, you've got your various static colors. Obviously, depending on what controller you attach to this, then you will get, obviously, different results depending on what you're connecting to it. I'll pull this uh, front panel off a minute so you can see what they look like without the uh, the mesh in front. Although I think the mesh actually, depending on the angle you're at, actually does do a pretty good job of kind of diffusing it as well. So now you can see what it's like internally. Uh, let's go for auto. So there we go. There is your kind of rainbow puke. It doesn't look quite as good on camera as what it does in real life. The colors are very vibrant and it's a very pretty look. I do like it. It is pretty cool. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about 160 mil fans. That is something which I feel is going to be down to the individual. I think they make up for a lot of things. So if you were a fan of the GameX F15, for example, or the uh, kind of the younger sibling of this which was the Lankel 215 which I was a big fan of that had two 200 mil fans up front which was good but the 200 mil fans are one of those things where they're kind of they're good but only for one purpose and that is for low rpm moderate airflow because you don't get the static pressure and also a lot of the fans were kind of blanked off at the sides with the metal bars etc which they've completely eradicated in this so there's basically no restriction or no resistance behind the fans there's no filtration as such other than the front panel so these 160s are going to have a lot greater kind of uh, staying power and almost more static pressure to push that air through so you've got an equivalent of 320 mils worth of air going through there which is uh yeah, pretty awesome. So if you are into your land cases, but you don't want to spend absolute fortune and you don't want something quite as big and as heavy as the Land Call 3, then I think the Land Call 216 has done a very good job. And it's come in, considering the inflation as it is at the moment in the UK and pricing, etc., import duties, yada, 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 to be able to still do this for about 100, 120 pounds, depending on where you're shopping at the time of filming. I think they've done a really good job. I was expecting it to be closer to 150. It would have been nice for it to be in a perfect world and inflation not be where it is and this be at that kind of magical uh, kind of 90 to 100 pounds mark, but it isn't that world that we live in. So yes, there is uh, some increased costs, especially here in the UK anyway. So I think that's gonna be pretty much it for the Lancel 216. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you've got any more comments or questions, like I said at the beginning of the video, I will be using this as my daily driver, so I'm going to transfer my entire video editing rig into this PC. I'm going to give it a good run for at least a month, and then we'll do a follow-up video and basically discuss all the pros and cons. Realistically, I cannot see there being any real cons. The only thing for me is that it's white. I'm not a huge fan of white cases. Um, we've got um, a wood burner, we've got cats and all kinds of other things, so it doesn't do well for white cases in the long term. I would have preferred a black case personally. Um, maybe you do as well. And if you do, then obviously there's gonna be links in the video description so you can check those out for yourself. But yeah, I'll be interested to see how this runs. Um, I'm gonna be putting here the Intel 13900K along with a Radeon RX 6900 XT. So there's gonna be some pretty beefy parts in there. So this thing had better do some pretty good cooling, which be honest with you with all this mesh and these fans if it can't cool it then i'll be amazed but anyway if you want to find out more make sure you stay subscribed and it's very easy to do just hit that subscribe button and the chime notification to be notified of future video releases i think that's going to wrap things up i've been mike this is mike's unboxing reviews and how to and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video thanks for watching